Welcome to Chris BI. My name is Chris and I'm here with Dax. And today we're gonna show you how you can create a data flow that then loads your Power BI data mart so you can properly manage an instance of your data out inside the service. Can't wait to show it to you. Let's check it out. Alliance is counting on you. Like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, turn on that alarm bell so you don't miss any future emission. All right, so Dex, let me explain where you, how you get started. It's okay, buddy? Uh, so we're gonna pull up that great Power BI report that we talked about that has that amazing Power BI model into it. We wanna get all this stuff out into the service so we can start to manage these things separately. This adds a lot of value because now you can manage individual table refreshes and uh, you know, so you're not trying to just necessarily refresh the entire model all at once. And if you have issues, like figure out why you're having problems, that can be really tricky. By separating these things out, you can really improve your ability to troubleshoot all of your loads, okay? So uh, how do we wanna do this? We wanna make this as easy as possible. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go over to my transform data. I'm just gonna click on transform data. Up pops my transform window. And because all of my backend is built on the common languages, so Power Query or the tabular engine, uh, it, it's gonna be really easy for me to take existing Power Query code and bring that into the system. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go to my advanced editor on one of my tables. I'm gonna hit copy on this guy. And then I'm gonna head over into the Power BI service. So inside the Power BI service, this is the Power BI data mart we, we created last time. And I'm gonna head over to new, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on data flow. It's gonna prompt you, do you wanna create a data mart? You already have one, so like, no, uh, click on no. And it's gonna come up to uh, the, the data flow screen where we're gonna be creating a new table, all right? Now, one of the things that you need to have in place especially if you're going to an on-prem service is an existing data mart. So you might want to check or a, a gateway. So we want to check that out ahead of time. So I'm going to open up my gateway. I'm like going back in, that's weird. Uh, so I'm going to go in, I'm going to go over to my managed connections and gateways and make sure that I've got a gateway already installed for this. Um, now, if you don't have access to this and to, to know if this is all set up for you, uh, if you don't have access to the admin section, you can go to where this report is published. And so for example, this is my uh, Dark Power BI report with my Dark Power BI data set that I've got right here. You can kind of see those right, right here. These are in my reporting uh, workspace, right? So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna look under settings. And I do like to check this out before I create any of these so I know what I'm setting up, okay? so. When I'm connecting this, I'm going to be connecting this into my uh, Kratos BI Enterprise, right? So it's gonna be going to that gateway, right? So it's the Enterprise DW connection on this server, right? So this is what I'm gonna be setting up and configuring, all right? So this is all set up, it works. Uh, I could go and I can look at like the last refreshes. Hey, it's all working. So like I have strong confidence I'm gonna be able to get this up and running inside my data flows. If this wasn't working, I'd have to I'd troubleshoot that first, okay? So back into our data flows. Because I already have all my Power Query information together, I can head down to my blank query and I can just go in, I can select everything that I did. Actually, maybe I went through that fast. So add new tables. I scroll down the bottom so you can kind of see this. Oh, and I'm almost in the way here. Let me get out of the way because it is a, the direct query, come on, blank query is, is right here, right? So you can see it right there, All right? I'm gonna click on the blank query and that's where I'm gonna go and I'm gonna paste that in. Now I'm gonna go in and, and this is where I'm gonna select that, the, the gateway. So I'm gonna go to Kratos BI Enterprise. One note, on that gateway that I was creating, you have to be the administrator of the gateway. So. Uh, if you can't access it through like the admin session and be able to see what gateways are out there, you're not gonna be able to create this data flow. So you kind of have to have that ability to uh, create uh, create objects on that, that gateway. So be aware of that, all right? That's if this is an on-prem solution, all right? So I'll click on next. 
it's going to start to create it, but then it's going to ask for my credentials once it evaluates it, right? So right over here is configure. Con I'm going to be clicking on configure connection. It's going to realize what I've already connected to. And because I have admin on it, I'm going to click on connect. My data is then going to load in. I am then going to say, hey, this is right. But one of the things I want to do inside of here is I want to make sure that I rename this query so I can kind of keep track of this, right? So this is my uh, dim account, right? And, and pro tip, I'm going to copy that as well, right? So oops, right? Paste that in, hit enter. You can see that it gets renamed, right? Now I'm going to be renaming this data flow to dim account, and I want these queries to be consistent. Now, a big reason for having one data flow for each query is then you can refresh individual queries at a time. So if it comes down to troubleshooting, you're able to say, okay, what query or queries are failing? And so that you could fix it at that point in time. Okay, so you could start to um, segment out each of your loads and then your model refresh so that you have timing and you can be purposeful in each one of these, okay? Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and close. And my model is gonna be, it's gonna run, it's gonna process, make sure everything's ready. That looks good. And we're gonna see this show up as a data flow. It's gonna refresh. Now, this is where we will want to have that save, save dimension name right here, right? So, uh, and then we, we typically wanna have a description in here help the other team members in case they have any questions when they're looking at it. So save, always want to be like descriptive and help help your future people out. This is going to run, always make sure that you hit refresh now. And then we want to make sure that we, we go back in and we schedule when this refresh is going to happen, right? So it's kicking off right now. So we're going to populate the data out in the service. And then we could do something from there. Okay. Uh, another good reason for uh, separating these things out is uh, and using data that's already brought into the service is this allows for you to start to follow a strong web development pattern, which is to take information from wherever it is. And even if it's in the cloud, right, bring that data, at, you know, into a location that's uniform inside the cloud that you can then do something from. Because right? if you think about the cloud, it's distributed computing that's accessible all over the place, right? Uh, so if you're trying to work with data that's in Singapore and the U.S. and Brazil and South America and wherever, right? You're going to have all sorts of slow, you know, redundancy issues and, and performance will be a, a challenge. But if you first go connect to all those different places, bring it together in one central place and then start to do something with it, you're gonna straighten out a ton of challenges that you have, all right? And if you build that pattern, then it becomes really easy for you to do this over and over and over again and have really minimal problems and challenges when it comes to managing your larger solution, okay? It's not saying you won't still have them, but you'll have fewer and they'll be much easier for you to troubleshoot, okay? So once that's done, I'm gonna go back into my workspace. I'm gonna go over to my data flow that we could see right here, All right? So I've got my dim account here and I'm gonna be clicking on these ellipses and shoot and going into the settings, right? So the settings, click on that. And now I wanna make sure that I schedule the refresh for this because I wanna keep these things up to date. Now, uh, one of the things that I do really like to recommend is, is think through when it comes to how you're doing your loads, right? So we've got, data that's gonna be available uh, that you're gonna land inside your cloud, right? So find a common time for that. Then give yourself some time for all those processes to run and then load that into you know, your SQL Data Mart, right? And then a SQL Data Mart, when you load it in, it's gonna you know, refresh, it's gonna load into that automated Mart. But if you end up having to create a data set that sits on top of that Data Mart that's different, pick a different time for that. So one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose that that at 5 a.m. I'm gonna do all of my loads for my server and bring that in, um, or I'm gonna do that at midnight, right? Pick a time for that, and then my data mart's gonna be an hour later, uh, right? So I'm gonna do 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and then 7 a.m. for my analytics. Now, if you have a whole bunch of people that start at 7 a.m., 
and you want to get in early in case there's issues so you can resolve, think about starting it earlier, right? So start at midnight to land the data, right? Then uh, at, at you know, 1 a.m., bring into your data mart, and then at 2 a.m., load into your model, all right? So, uh, in fact, yeah, why don't I, I even do that? So I'm going to choose my time zone, uh, Central Time, U.S. and Canada. I'm going to add a time, and I want to do this at... Um, uh, actually, I want to do this at 12 midnight, so that is uh, 12 a.m., right? Yeah, 12 a.m. Uh, I'm going to click on Apply, and I'm just going to follow that pattern for all of my data flows, right? So 12 a.m., I'm going to load it, and then at, so at midnight, it's going to load, and then at 1 a.m., I'm going to do my refresh of my data mark, and it's at uh, uh, 2 a.m., I'm going to refresh my analytics, giving me plenty of time for when I get up in the morning, check my pipelines, check if there's any issues, and resolve those, okay? I do want to make sure that uh, I do check, I, I not just notify myself as the owner, but that I, I email a group that I have so we get that set up. This is another thing that you might want to consider turning on. The Enhanced Compute Engine for the data flow will help it with performance at scale and processing, especially if you're going to be uh, merging things or doing anything else with it, so if you have to apply additional transformations. I am going to recommend that you turn this on, but this will help if you ever need to do direct query back against this data flow. You can do that. So you can actually have the cache data and then a direct query back to that data. I'm going to continue to repeat that pattern for all of the tables in my model. Okay. And boom, I've got all of my data flows are all up and created. Uh, so here's some things we're going to do once that's created. You're going to number one, make sure that there's that they've been refreshed. As you can kind of see here, it looks like, hey, everything's been refreshed. I've got a next refresh date. Those are two things that are very important. But let's, because we had a, we created a lot of tables, let's scroll down and see if I got it. Oh, look at this. I'm missing some things. So I've got some uh, refreshes, current refreshes that are missing. Let's, let's hone in here. All right, I've got some refreshes that are missing, you know, here and here and here and here. So I'm going to go in. I'm just going to click on this refresh now tab, right? So it's, it's really easy to, to refresh it now. So I'm going to hit refresh now on all of these data sets that I don't have a refresh on, right? So that is good. And then I did see that up here that on uh, this, on fact finance, I'm missing a next refresh date. So that's wrong. So I missed that. That's all right. So uh, I'm going to go back into my settings. On my fact finance, I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn on my fact refresh again, making sure that I set up just like I did the others, where I have everything set up in my time zone, running at, at midnight, and apply that. Now, I also, like I said, want to make sure that I've turned on my enhanced compute engine, so that's all good to go. Uh, this is the last check thing that I want to do, is I also just want to run through quickly and ensure that the that the enhanced compute engine is turned on in all of my tables. Uh, what this is gonna do is just ensure that if I ever end up needing to have these computes uh, to do merges or joins or any of those you know, things that happen on the back end, that this is all, that they're all set up and they're, they're, they're running and working uh, with, with similar resources available to them, right? So you don't wanna have one table that's got the enhanced compute engine on and another table that's not, or worse, Let's say you're doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff and you've got a bunch of tables and um, you just have one that's missing it, right? Like you'll say, hey, all my processes work so well, but this one isn't. And then you'll spend a whole bunch of time troubleshooting and you'll forget about this little setting because you don't really set it all that often. And then you'll come back and be like, oh yeah, I remember that video Chris showed me. I have to run through, make sure that they're all set up. And as I'm seeing here, uh, this one's set up on and then and this is actually this is my most important one it is turned on there as well okay now uh when it comes to endorsement if i'm building out these data flows and i want my people to be using these as part of the tables i would run through and look at doing a promoted um uh data set so for my team and my team members i'd potentially even looking at at certifying this especially if this is going into a data mart where we're going to say like this is something that we want to use uh, you know repeatedly and this is going to be like a key thing that's out there this is something that i would say and i give recommendation to say that this is what qualifies as a certified data flow but i'd want to make sure that 
you know, as you go along, you have a consistent uh, uh, certification process and understanding within your organization as to what does it mean to be certified versus what does it mean to be promoted? Check this all out. Everything is certified. Create my data flows. Now we got to bring these into tables inside of my data mart, right? So we're now going to be going into our Power BI demo data mart. Okay, so now I am in my demo data mart. I want to go and I want to get data from within uh, the data flows that we're using. Uh, so this is a power platform. Uh, this is going to be a uh, data flow from the power platform. And this is going to change me over to my, my workspaces. I don't have any environments. And I'm going to go over into my Power BI data mark demo. And I'm going to find all my certified data marks or data flows I just created, right? So you could see that all 30 of those are all available inside of here. So that's great. I'm going to choose my DIM account. Now we have data inside of the DIM account. We're going to go ahead and we're going to continue to repeat that over and over again for all of these tables that are in there. So we're going to go to Power Platform, Data Flows. We go to Next. Now in this case, we do load all of the data inside of one. As you can see, if I go into my workspaces and I go to my Power BI Data Mart demo, I can expand this uh, DIM account. You'll see that. Um, well, I guess it's not checked, but I can go through and I can check this in each one. This does not create unique load processes that are out there. It just creates a single one that does the refresh as you, as you saw on the previous screen. We, we just load uh, one time. So, you know, you have that data mark that, that needs to do the entire load in a similar fashion to uh, loading a data set. It loads everything all at one one time. So, so that's another great reason why you have the data flows out inside the service, because then you can you can run through and you can make sure that all of that stuff is all set up and you're ready to go. Uh, note, we've got uh, this content saying that there's no data available, but we're going to run through and we're going to uh, sort that stuff out by running through. And what did we do the last time? We refreshed everything. Uh, all the data flows, once we've kind of mapped this out, we refresh the data flows that were out there. And then we refresh the data mark, right? Uh, that appears like it solved a lot of our issues, although some of these are showing up with data. So that's a good sign that this is working as intended. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. It's going to go through and it's going to process and load all of this information. You can see each one of them is finishing so that this is not taking a terrible amount of time. But then I'm going to go to my Power BI demo data mark and I'm going to refresh this. Okay, this is going to take a little while because it's going to refresh all of that data again. When that gets done and watching this to complete right here is what I'm watching. Looks like that pauses. It's going to keep spinning, spinning, spinning. Oh, and it's done. It's going to head into my data mark. And I'm going to check out all my tables, making sure that I've got data in each table. Something I, I want to do once I've got this set up. So I remember I've got my loads running and those loads work. Right now I want to go in and I want to make sure that my demo, my data mart here refreshes. When do I want it to refresh? I want it to refresh after all of my loads have done run. So I have these set up to run at midnight. I'm going to give it a buffer and say, you know, I could do you know, 1230 AM and have it refresh at that point in time. I want to give a little room in there in case like all of a sudden we have something that runs long. So I'm going to set this up. Uh, I'm going to go into settings here and I'm going to choose this to uh, refresh on a regular basis. Uh, yep, central time. And I'm going to choose for this to set up at 1 AM. So that's now set up and I can see right here that my data mart is set up to refresh right there. Now I've got everything all set up. I'm ready to go with this. I have all my data flows built, loaded into the system. I've got it refreshed. I've got a schedule set up for them. I've got enhanced compute turned on. I've then made sure I've mapped each and every one of those into my data mart. And I've set a refresh on my data mart to after those data flows load.
So, what do you think, Dex? Does that make sense to you? Does that you got it? How about you guys? Does this make sense in how you load all of your data from data flows first into data flows, individual data flows that go into a data mart, and then that you use and expand? I hope so. If you have questions, leave them in the comment down below. If you have answers to people, you respond to them. Right? Heck, if you watch this video and got this far, just even put a one in the comments down below. That helps out a ton uh, in the logarithms to show interactions. No, I really appreciate you guys watching through this. I do have brand new uh, data guide stickers that I just got in. So go ahead, head over to CareSBI.com, buy me a coffee, and I'll send you a, a, a nice letter and a sticker and all that good stuff. Uh, but other than that, you know, make sure you have liked and shared the video and all that good YouTube stuff, right? You know, help help me out. You guys have a great day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.